Sanctum Mysteries, brought to you by Bromo Seltzer. Welcome you in through the creaking door. Now, come in, come in. Don't be shy. Just put your best foot forward and be sure nobody bites you. <laughs> After all, as one werewolf said to the other, we'll have a howling good time. The trick is to keep your spirits up. Or maybe in the inner sanctum to keep them down. Hmm? <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Death's Old Sweet Song, is an original radio drama written by Lou Vittis and stars Mercedes McCambridge in the role of Peg and is presented by the Emerson Drug Company of Baltimore, Maryland, whose registered pharmacists compound that speedy, refreshing headache help in the familiar blue bottle, Bromo Seltzer. <laughs> And now for our little slice of life. Nothing fancy, just a couple of murders and a few pints of blood. <laughs> it's an old house on a side street. All the rooms are dark except one where an old man sits writing. Here I am, an old man in a dark house. An old man almost ready to die. But not yet. Not yet. I'm safe. Outside in the street, an organ is playing. Love's old, sweet song. The windows are shuttered and locked. The door is heavy and bolted from the inside. I'm safe. There are three of them who want my money. They're young. I'm old. They want me to die. They cannot wait, they think. But I'm clever... And they will have to wait. They... they... You... Don't come closer. Don't. What are you going to do? That poker, no. I'm, I'm very old. I'm, I'm very old. I shall die very soon anyway. Put that poker down. I don't want to die this way. I don't want to... Peter. 
she may run. But your blood is on her hands, Peter. She'll come back. And when she does, we'll wait for her, won't we, Peter? We'll both wait for her. Yes, ma'am? Oh, the, the phone, please. Phone booth over at the other end. Oh, thanks. house where Simon Prentice lives, isn't it? Are you going visiting at this hour? Yes, I've uh, I'm his cousin. At two o'clock in the morning. I am his cousin. Now, will you please announce me? Well, I could lose my job. Mr. Prentice is a very irritable man. I've got to see him. Simon won't mind if I do... Simon? Well, all right. His apartment is 6C. The elevator is over there. Thank you. Simon, you've got to begin. Simon? The door. Open. I'd better go. Simon? The living room, maybe. Oh, Simon, you're here. I thought you... Why didn't you answer the door? My dear, if... If I got out of this chair, I'd be dead before I walked two steps. Simon... What's the matter? Matter is a thin knife between my ribs. Oh, I... Don't touch it. But I have... Take it out and, and my life and pour out after it. Oh, Simon, we, we've got to do something. Yes, I have to die. And you... A doctor? It's too late. Well, for, for that. Huh? Uh, for I mean, what are you saying? Try to tell me. Street, street organ man. Yes. He, he's the one. He's the one. Simon? Simon! to Inner Sanctum, brought to you by Bromo Seltzer. Misery likes company. I don't know who first said it, but I wonder if he was a Bromo Seltzer user. He or she might have been thinking of how the misery of a headache may be found in the company of a stomach upset and a case of jangled nerves. Well, I just bet the person who thought out that phrase was a Bromo Seltzer user, Mr. Weiss. Gee, he must have known about Bromo Seltzer being the answer to the triple trouble of a headache. I think so, too, Ellen. You see, friends, a refreshing glass of speedy Bromo Seltzer helps relieve not only your headache itself, but the sick stomach and jittery nerves that may accompany an ordinary headache. That's the triple trouble Bromo Seltzer is so good for. Isn't this how the little rhyme about it goes, Mr. Weiss? Fight headache grief with three-way relief. <laughs> Now, let's see. Where were we the last time Peg screamed? 
Oh, yes. Up in Simon Prentice's apartment, discovering that Simon would never renew his lease. You see, he'd shortly be moving into a rather smaller place. Approximately six feet long. Mm -hmm. Somebody had cut his requirements down with a long, thin knife in the back. And Peg, staring at his corpse, heard... Whereupon, being rather an active girl on this particular night, she grabbed the nearest exit and started down the street. But a cop at the corner suggested a detour into a handy lunchroom. Now, what'll it be, sister? Oh, uh, could I have a sandwich? And a uh, coffee, please. What kind of sandwich? Any kind. I mean, a... Uh, How about turkey? Yes, yes, of course. It's good. You want to hunk off this end? Yes, please. Yeah, coming up. Thank you. Yeah, there you are. Can I get your coffee? Thanks. You just heard Slim's boy pounding those ivories. Just heard Slim's boy pounding those ivories. But just one moment. We've got a special police flash here. And Miss Margaret Flanders is wanted by the police. Oh, no. Your coffee, Miss. Questioning in connection with the murder of Simon Prentice, whose body was discovered shortly after midnight at 49 Oak Grove Avenue. Hey, you know, that's right, Miss. The body was discovered by the dead man's Is it? Miss Flanders is 23. Chestnut hair, hazel eyes, about 5 foot 3. It sounds like a good-looking babe. It could almost be a description of you, sister. When last seen, she was wearing a tailored gray suit and gray hat. So <laughs> ain't that funny you're wearing a gray suit, ain't you? Look, I just remembered. I have to go. Right now. Here. Hey. Hey, miss, she ain't it. She was carrying a large leather handbag, black with a gold clasp. Is it the kind of bag that babe? Anyone seeing a woman... Boy, wouldn't that be a joke on me if that was the babe the cops was after and I was too dumb to recognize her, huh? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I was too dumb. Where's that phone? <laughs> Why are you here? The police are after me. There are police here. But at the front. I sneaked in through the back door, the one that no one knows about, the one we used as children. The Alababa door, we called it. Ah. And it isn't only the police. No. No. The murderer is after me, too. I know it. Who is? I don't know his name. I don't even know what he looks like, but... This doesn't sound very convincing. It does. He killed Cousin Simon, too. Did he? No, won't you let me sleep here without telling anybody? Come. Oh, thank you. I'll be so grateful. Please, Jim, come with me. We'll go here. Oh, but this is... This is the room. Get here. Uh, all right. So dark. The dead need no light. Uh, you mean... Come here. No. Come here. All right. Don't touch me. They left him here for the night. They covered him so that his wounds wouldn't freak out. What are you going to say? Oh, no, don't. You've seen him before. Don't. There. <sighs> you can see him better now. His head. His face. I can't. You must. Don't let go of my arm. Don't you hurting me. Look at him. I am. Anymore. <laughs> I loved him too, Mrs. Thorpe. You. Wanted a place to rest? To sleep tonight? Yes, I did. I do. All right, you have one. Here? In this room? In this room. In this room. With him? He'll not molest you. No, I couldn't. You must. No, I'm going. Oh, oh. Let me go. No, I can't stay here. I'm stronger than you. <laughs> Shall I hit you again? <laughs> You stay here tonight. 
When I was a child, my mother told me of a way they caught murderers years ago in the old country. They locked them in a room with a corpse of the one they had killed. Oh, no. And they left them there for 12 hours. 12 hours. And they opened the room and went inside and looked at the corpse. But that's just an old wide chill. And if the wounds of the corpse had bled, then the person in the room was guilty and had to die. Oh, but you can't believe that. You're young. You're pretty. A jury might let you off with a few years in prison. I was sure you had murdered Mr. Peter. I'd strangle you myself. But I'm not sure. Not entirely. So I have to be sure. No, you can't tell that way. I believe in the old. I believe in the old. I shall be able to tell. Good night. No, you mustn't block me. I shall. And while you're with him, this pray. Pray. <laughs> pray that that tired blood, pray that that tired blood not begin to flow again. This is Arlington. Oh, John, it's so good to see you, John. Easy, easy, oh, 
been so long waiting. Good Lord, who's that? The organ grinder. Oh, I can see he's carrying one, but... When I found Uncle Pete's body, he was playing outside. And outside of Simon's apartment, too. He's been following me all night, Johnny. Caught up with me. But I broke the lamp over his head. Good heavens, you may have killed him. Uh, uh, alive. John, take me away from here. Oh, if he's the killer. John, I can't stay here any longer. Please take me away. Please take me away. All right, darling. All right. <laughs> and better straighten your things. Those look like they've been slept in. They were. Never mind that. Just take yeah, me away. Come on, come on. Oh, and John, the back way. I don't want the police. Well, all right. Sneak out, but... You can't go on hiding forever. I know, I know that, John, but I've got to rest for a little while. I've got to rest. Then you can take me to the police. I'll tell them everything. But first, John, I've got to rest. Rest. I didn't want to disturb you. You needed the rest. Uh, I'd better pull off the highway. Now, Peg, uh, you'll have to give yourself up to the police. Uh, but will they believe me? Well, of course they will. Well, I'm not so sure. I found Uncle Pete's body. I was with Simon when he died. They'll say I have a motive. I inherit a third of Uncle Pete's money. Well, for that matter, so do I. Motive isn't everything. Alice. However tough the case may look, you'll have to go back and face the music. Which reminds me, we know who killed Uncle Pete and Simon. I guess we do. But you and I can both describe him. We saw him. I can both describe him. We saw him back at the house. Now, once you give the police that lead, our murderous friend will stop killing people to the tune of Love's Old Sweet Song. Oh. What's the matter, Peg? How did you... How did you know he played that song? For heaven's sake, Peg, stop being so imaginative. You don't think I'm the organ grinder, do you? I know you're not. Well, then. then the organ grinder wasn't the murderer. You were. You're a fool, Peg. You could have kept the mouth shut. John! A jury might have given you life with the evidence I filled up. That would have been all right with me. Your inheritance would have been voided, and I'd have got it all as I planned, and I still will get it. In your hand when you painted, I killed that Snooky housekeeper. But I'm not the jury. Oh, John! Let's not be sentimental, since you know I dispose of dear Uncle Pete and dear cousin Simon. Not to mention Mr. Sorensen. What else can I do? Oh, no, you wouldn't. Oh, but I would. No one knows I'd put you up at the house. As you remember, not only did we both sneak out the back way, the Alabama way, but. I sneak in the back way. No, no. I need no. the money, my No, no. Get your hands off my throat, John. You're hurting. I wish you wouldn't struggle. Uh, oh, it makes it longer and uh, more painful. Just uh, hurry. Just hurry. Just hurry. Better. Just better. Uh, I need only uh, two things more. Uh, uh, two I was trying to run away from you. 
I was really running towards death. You could say it that way. Death, alias Cousin John. It's not an alias for him. Not anymore. What? Cousin John certainly was a card, wasn't he? Well, at least he had a very good poker hand. As Gungo P. Which reminds me, the question I want to ask Cousin John before they deposit him in that safest of all safe deposit vaults, the cemetery. Oh, the question? Well, if you remember, Uncle Pete was in a room whose windows were locked and shuttered and whose door... How did Cousin John get in? Oh, sure. I can think of a few explanations. There was a secret passageway, or John was already hiding in the room when Uncle Pete locked himself in. But just suppose the answer might be Cousin John just walked through the door. Through the door. Why? <laughs> hear anyone say this? I'd give a million dollars if I could do something about this headache. Maybe you've said it yourself. Well, next time you're thinking of mortgaging the family heirlooms in the hope of easing an ordinary headache, remember there's an economical way to get headache relief, an economical way to get headache relief, an economical way to get headache relief. The, you see, here's the reason. Oh, I should say, the reason. Gromo Seltzer is so economic. Just a teaspoonful of Gromo Seltzer in a glass of water is all it takes to prepare refreshing headache health. And also? Gromo Seltzer doesn't do just one job. It does three. Three important jobs, and does them fast. Gromo Seltzer helps relieve your headache and also helps relieve your jittery nerves and your upset stomach. And as you know, upset stomach and jitters may go with a headache. So, friends, take this economical split-second effervescent next time a headache sneaks up on you. Caution, use only as directed. If headaches persist or recur, see your doctor. And remember, for effective economical relief... By the way, this month's Inner Sanctum mystery novel is Widowmaker by Michael Blank. Now it's time to close the squeaking door until next week at this same time. When Bromo Seltzer brings you another Inner Sanctum mystery, directed by Hyman Brown. Next week. Now, some people can take their dreams or leave them, but John Lane is stuck with... John Lane is stuck with it because he dreams about a night. A sharp knife. Then some other people get stuck with it. Some other people get stuck with the same knife, and a well-done mummy turns up in a lion's mummy turns up in a limestone pit, and another pit, and another. Does all this begin to sound like a nightmare? Oh, oh, that's as it should be. Because the name of next week's inner sanctum mystery is nightmare. You'll be sure to listen, won't you? Until next Monday, then. Until next Monday, then. Good night. Good night. Good night. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> this is CBS. Columbia Broadcasting System.